I'm Dan, one of the technical managers in the Lanimon Brewing team. And I'm coming to you today from my office that's a shipping container in Australia. And what I'm going to demonstrate is the Durham test. The Durham test is looking for Saccharomyces diastaticus. Now Saccharomyces diastaticus can secrete an enzyme called glucoamylase. And this enzyme can break down the complex sugars known as dextrin. So it can break up the 1,4 and in some strains, the 1,6 glucosidic linkages. What this means is that if you've got a beer where the diastaticus shouldn't be there, the beer could be 1010, it could ferment down to 1004 or even zero, and this can create more CO2 as the simple sugars are metabolized and more ethanol, which could lead to exploding bottles or cans. Now, if you've used any Saison strain like our Belly Saison, Belly Saison is a diastaticus strain and has this enzyme. And this method is a simple test that we'll go through now so that a brewer can look to see if they've got cross-contamination with diastaticus. So you want to have some kind of filter paper, whether it's lab grade filter paper number one, or I've used before in quite a few breweries, just a coffee filter paper. So you want to bend that coffee filter paper. You want to have some kind of funnel and something to capture the beer in. So we're going to crack that beer and we'll pour that beer in to get that filtering. And that's the beer that we're going to use for this particular test. The next step for the Durham test is to have uh, a test tube and a Durham tube. So you have a test tube. The Durham tube is just like a, a smaller version of a test tube. And that goes in the opposite way because you want the gas to be captured in that. And then you'll have a cap, whether it's plastic or something like a metal cap that's out there. And again, because we're going to put this glass into a pressure cooker or, or autoclave, you want to ensure that it's borosilicate glass so it's not going to explode in the pressure cooker. The step of the pressure cooker is quite simple. You're going to be wanting to run a steam setting, usually for about 21 minutes. In your pressure cooker, you're going to have this reservoir, and that's where you want to put your water. And that's going to generate your steam and heat. You're then going to have, um, and this is just an old, old jar, where you're going to put your tubes in. Um, again, inside this, so that they're not floating around in that reservoir, you want to add some water into that, just to help with the heat transference. And when you've made up your tubes, you're going to put them into that pressure cooker and put that on steam setting for 21 minutes. Now, what will happen when you add your beer that you've filtered to your durum tube is the tube will float when you first make up the test. But you want about 15 mil in here. Now it's gonna float because it's got air in it and it's pushed it up. But what happens when you autoclave that in your pressure cooker is that tube's going to sink down to the base And you can see here is one I prepared, that tube set down and there's no bubbles in there. And that's what we want. And that's been autoclave. So as you put all these tubes in your pressure cooker, put that on for steam setting 21 minutes. As they come out, you want to let those cool down. And then once they're cooled down, you're able to inoculate. So to give you an example of inoculation, Again, because you're going to be working with flame, when you open that pressure cooker, you want to have safety glasses on, just in case. Your flame is going to create your sterile environment in which you're going to inoculate. And here I have my beer sample, but I wish I can under the flame in the cellar. I've got a pipetta set to one mil. 
and I'm going to lightly flame. And then I'm going to take my one mil of sample here. I'm going to take off the cap of the durum, lightly flame that tube. I'm going to gently down the end of the glass, inoculate into my sample. Flame the end. And I'm going to close that. And that's as simple as it is to inoculate. And then I'm going to put that in the incubator and leave it for up to 14 days and check each day. I'll show you some examples that I prepared earlier. We can see here we've got a small bubble that is bubbling away as I've actually poured a higher inoculated concentration of the belly saison into this and it's slowly filling up the tube uh, and the CO2 bubble is being formed there so we know that something's happening. Um, again in a higher concentration of the uh, belly saison we can see that tube is just full of gas there and that's showing that you know in this case belly saison is excreting that enzyme and it's breaking up those sugars uh, into simple sugars that not only belly saison but any other yeast that's present in the beer can consume. Here, just for comparison, I've actually uh, put a, a large amount of, of Windsor into this test tube. You can see how much is in there, a huge amount. And you can see there's been no bubbles and, and no gas consumed or created um, by that, that yeast because we know that there's no contamination in that yeast with all the, all the testing that we do. Normally you wouldn't put such a high concentration in, you would be uh, diluting in some autoclaves sterile water and then inoculating into these tubes. So I'll just share my screen again now. So what I've done there is I've, I've dropped uh, this uh, cotton swab off a plate and we can see there we've had no fermentation, so that's straight off an agar. Um, again, here are some other examples. There's a small bubble there. So sometimes that could happen if we have some uh, glycogen reserves or uh, trilla host reserves of the yeast itself that, that, that you're putting in there. Or if you've uh, grabbed a beer through the midway through fermentation, you might see some small bubbling in the tube because it's using that sugar. Uh, but if there's not contamination, it hasn't completely filled the tube like this one here. Um, and what you can do is, is pour germ tubes into other tubes. Um, there's a real high uh, version of it where it's, where it's actually managed to float the tube. And here we can see some background contamination of something else that's happening, which would be Britannomyces forming its uh, palatal sodomyosulate uh, on top of the tube. So if your determination of results for this particular test are passes where we've got no fermentation, high degree, it's going to really fill that tube all the way up. So we know it's probably a more wild type of diastaticus that's able to cut the 1.4 and 1.6 and completely ferment out. Um, packet yeast, or you might still have a little bit of residual extract, and this is where you might want to pour that tube into another tube and, and incubate again. Um, or medium attenuation, so something like belly saison, where it's going to fill about half the tube and not all of the tube. Just to recap on this really simple method, we just filter beer that is finished fermenting, uh, it is around 10 tenth. So we know most of those multi triads and multi tetra triads sugars have been consumed. We pour that in, the tube will float. Once we put it into the pressure cooker on the steam setting for about 21 minutes, that will sink and also autoclave the, the uh, beer so that there's nothing else in there, just the beer. Ready for the test, we inoculate, and then you want to incubate. Um, to see where, uh, basically, to, to make that reaction faster of what's happening. 